Hello everyone, it's your host Seth the Programmer, and today we're going to be talking about some more Bleach on my channel, and more specifically the former Captain of Squadron 5 of the Gote 13, Sosuke Aizen. Now, I've talked about Aizen once before on my channel, and I'd say pretty in-depth actually, although it was granted over two years ago. I still think it was pretty decent. You can check that discussion in Madara vs. Aizen that I'll link down below. Now, while I did talk about some of his power level, per se, in a cross-verse sense, I'd really like to discuss Aizen as a character within his own verse, and some things I think I missed out on in my Madara video. Now, before we get started, I did get sponsored today, and I do guarantee that you guys will want to support this one. This one is pretty important for Bleach, especially if you guys want the series to come back. It's always important to sponsor Bleach products. So today's lovely sponsor just so happens to be the new Bleach mobile game, Bleach Immortal Soul. First and foremost, this game is an officially licensed RPG game, so this means that if you love the story of Bleach, then you'll love the story of this game. Obviously, as a fantastic bonus, it comes balanced with an equally good chunk of action and the game you collect level up and use your favorite characters to create a strategic team to devastate any potential enemies in your way of course there are various modes to choose from with its story mode pvp battle arena and for those of you who are looking for more of a challenge roguelike so if any of this interests you which it 100 should if you're interested in this video especially since you're more than likely a bleach fan then go to the description below and follow all of the relevant links pre-registering will allow you to receive a very generous gift at launch which can be done via Google Play or the App Store. Of course, in order to get the gift pack, you will have to register via the official website. So what are you waiting for? Once this video is done, go to the description, pre-register, get your gift, and enjoy a fantastic new Bleach mobile game. I think everyone can agree that the way Aizen presents himself is on a totally different caliber than most, if not all, other characters in Bleach. It's sort of similar to how the Sage of Six Paths presented himself to Naruto in their first introduction, except instead of being some super experienced smart being that wants to help the world as he is, he instead uses all his brain power to be an absolute schadenfreude to everyone he is engaged with, to destroy them in the absolutely most humiliating way possible. This massive intelligence Aizen claims to be the second in the Soul Society, only second to Uruhara with his thousands of plans for every battle Jimmy Neutron brain, and power he claims nobody can actually contest him on in just his base state, said maybe Yamamoto and Kenpachi, is one of his stark characteristics most people are familiar with. However, what people aren't usually familiar with is the specifics of these, and how Aizen evolved and regressed from that numerous times within the story, and often mistake all his showings for being normal. Even before all of the crazy Hogyoku amplifications Aizen receives later, Aizen is still a godly powerhouse with the power to manipulate everyone around him. When Captain Hitsugaya and Shunsui tag team him later on, claiming they won't let him use Kyoko Sugetsu, an ability that allows Aizen to perfectly control all the senses of someone that sees his Shikai release, Gin has a monologue about how arguing that Aizen needs Kyoko Sugetsu is a massive underestimation of his abilities, and it's confirmed that if Aizen were to use Kyoko Sugetsu to win all his fights, that the Espada would have never respect him enough to follow him, meaning even Aizen's raw Reatsu and spirit powers are enough to give every single member of the Espada a concussion and more than likely be immune to all of their hacks abilities and power-ups, which as Aizen describes in Arankar thinking that they stand a chance against the Lord of Arankars is illogical. The most notable of these hacks is being Espada number 7 Zamari's release Bruheria and its Amor ability, and Espada number 2 Baragon's passive hack Senescencia, its release state Aragante, and its Respira ability. This is impressive because Zamari's Amor is an ability that can completely control whatever it looks at, with Barragan's Senescencia being able to manipulate time itself to slow people down and even age them, on top of Respira that is pretty much this aging effect on roids. Yet, none of the Espada are convinced that these abilities will work on him in just his base state without even using his Shikai's ability. It's actually implied there's not even a sliver of hope for them to beat him, implying, as I said earlier, that Aizen more than likely outright negates these abilities with his raw spirit energy. This is pretty much confirmed two times later in which, for one, Aizen's notable quirk as a war potential for Yuha is his Ryatsu, and in his battle with the Captains. During the fight with the Captains, Hitsugaya freezes quote-unquote Aizen in place, and Soifan is able to land two taps of her Shikai, which activates her Kasatsu ability, that causes instant death. However, Aizen explains that due to his far superior spirit energy, he can simply overwrite hers and its abilities. It can be argued that Aizen is not actually there in this scene, and that she simply stabbed an illusion of Kyoka Sugetsu. However, it can still be said that Aizen said his 
Ryatsu counteracts hacks, and that it was supposed to be believable enough for the captains to still fall for his trap later. Obviously, if he said something ridiculous that they can't believe, they might be less willing to believe it's actually him. This alongside the can brawl all of the Espada and they have no chance of winning statement is pretty telling that he more than likely can't outright negate things like time acceleration, deceleration, and body manipulation hacks without much effort even in just his base state, which I'm going to keep saying over and over for this video. It also implies that it's very possible that every other hacks and odd ability we've seen in Bleach is beneath him so long as he scales far above it. After this, Aizen then proceeds to dismantle all the captains and visors that challenge him, including Soifan, Shunsui, Hitsugaya, Kamamura, and Shinji with absolutely no effort. Even after Shinji tries to manipulate him and beat him with all his senses distorted, Aizen instantly learns how to counter and fight within Shinji's collapse ability, then mocks him for literally being a Walmart knockoff version of Kyoka Suigetsu, which pretty much allows him to let people see a Tsukuyomi-like illusion at all times and control everything they can possibly sense. From here, Aizen only has two things he's actually scared of left in his way, and those two things are Captain General Yamamoto and Kenpachi Zaraki. Not even Unahana, the old Kenpachi, remotely intimidates him for discussion, despite the fact he used to teach at the Spirit Academy, and even Shunsui and Shinji know of her abilities, and she's the only one that can train Zaraki later on during the Blood War to reach a level to fight Yuha and the Quincy's. And despite the fact that Yamamoto, who even with one arm later in the war is confirmed to be the strongest of the Gote 13 and 13 Blades, faces Aizen, and Aizen can actually still do damage to him, and even with Yamamoto actually sacrificing his arm at one point and exploding with Hado 96, Aizen takes virtually no damage at all from this attack. This is following, of course, the massive planning that went into this whole encounter that allowed him to even outsmart both Yamamoto and Urahara at the same time, both of which are insanely intelligent, with Yamamoto having a maxed out intelligence stat in the data books and Urahara being confirmed to be even greater than that, yet Aizen could read the Hogyoku and its effects even better than Kisuke could, and he could easily construct a plan to seal away Yamamoto's Ryujin Jaka, which is confirmed to be the strongest Zanpak Toe in existence. He even purposely stalled Kenpachi with Order Hime's rescue, Yami and Ukiyora, so they could obtain immortality to body him when they did battle later. Although in all honesty, with Kyoko Sugetsu, he could probably have defeated Kenpachi even in base, he simply could have had Kenpachi sense a different level of power than what Aizen was actually using, and when Kenpachi suppressed himself to have a good fight like he always does, he'd one-shot him or something like that. Although I'm not Sosuke, so I'm not going to claim that it's a 100% idea, you might also be able to say that he just wanted to pit himself against Kenpachi with his Hogyoku state to see how far he could evolve using him as well. It doesn't 100% mean Kenpachi would beat him, and he was even confident that when it came down to it that his spiritual powers were the greatest in the Soul Society, even before the Hogyoku. Even after fighting Yamamoto as well, although he's not 100% sure he could have beat him either, you could once again say that he's still only saying that if he fought Yamamoto straight up that he'd lose, which is not his style to really begin with. Although, I'll probably concede that if Yamamoto went Bankai or something that Aizen would not be able to win, as in Bleach Guidebook Unmasked 3, it is stated that Aizen is actually not a true threat to Yamamoto and that he never actually surpassed him, but I still think that Shikai Yamamoto is somewhat debatable as obviously Yamamoto's Bankai is what's truly evolved to the point of insanity the past thousands of years, not really his Shikai. And even if it were true that Shikai Yamamoto were above Aizen, this is also not an anti-feat as Ukitake and Shunsui were pissing themselves at the mere side of it, and Ukitake states that its spiritual pressure is like an ocean of transcendent energy. On top of this, at even half power during the war, being greater than every captain, this isn't really all that crazy, and if anything, that would actually be an intelligent feat for him for being able to defeat someone stronger than himself. Another thing that kind of bugs me when you discuss base Aizen in this community is that people think he actually lost to Ishin Kurosaki. Now, while Ishin is more than likely one of the big three that the Espada are warned to avoid fighting with, this battle never once reached its conclusion, and it's somewhat questionable if Ishin was ever shown Kyoko Suigetsu in the past, although you could say it's more than likely as the entire point of protecting Ichigo was that he was the holy, unsullied child that had never witnessed Aizen Shikai. There's two reasons in particular I say that Aizen never lost or really struggled all that much with Ishin. For one, only Kenpachi and Yamamoto were ever stated to be threats to his plan, and he knows how Ishin would ever regain his powers if he did, as he pretty much was the cause of the entire Ichigo Vasto Lorde fiasco to begin with. The second reason is that at the end of the fight, Ishin says, what's the matter, reaching your limit already? But neither Aizen or Ishin are actually fatigued or have tried to use Bankai. He then follows up with the Hogyoku says that he's at his limit of his Soul Reaper state. This can be interpreted as two things, that one, he was actually using his full power and Ishin was stalemating it while warming up, or two, that the Hogyoku was about to transform him, and as 
as we learned shortly after, the Hogyoku is literally transforming and devouring Aizen's soul mid-battle with Ishin so that he could transcend. Due to this, it's not very solid to say that Ishin is without a doubt able to defeat base Aizen normally. It's questionable, but there is no concrete answer due to how vague Bleach can be sometimes. On top of this, the Kyoko Sugetsu argument is still a thing as well. Also, it should be noted that the menage a trois of you know, Yoruichi, Urahara, and Ishin are all pretty relative to each other, so even if you just say, oh, he never expected Ishin to get his power back, he did know that Urahara and Yoruichi were a thing, and he never once stated they were threats, so if they were so comparable to his level in Ishin, it doesn't make any sense in the end. It's literally probably just the Hokioku was devouring him mid-battle was about to transform him. Eventually, his Hokioku powers do activate, and it's stated that his powers surpassed the horizon and are heaven and earth compared to what they were before. It's to the point where the entire battle with the Bleach Sanin is pretty much him telling Urahara to prove that he should actually be cautious about any of his strategies. Urahara points out that Aizen is usually much smarter than this, and that he's letting the power get to his head, and this is somewhat true. However, the instant he powers up and tries remotely, he instantly destroys all three of them. It's to the point that even Ichigo is scared out of his mind and doesn't even want to fight anymore. His sheer power would engulf Ichigo's entire world in a depressing ocean of despair that takes months to get beaten out of him. However, once it did, Ichigo would also become transcendent as well and become one with Zangetsu. Aizen gets pretty beat up by Ichigo's new abilities, even with his new ability to teleport, quote unquote, apparently. We don't really know for sure if he can teleport, but it's implied. And then proceeds to get roasted for creating distance between them that he'd mocked Ichigo for earlier. Aizen evolves again in which some call his monster form or his fifth fusion or final form, whatever you want to call it. And in this state can actually damage this transcendent Ichigo who was manhandling an Aizen that was stronger than even Yamamoto with a simple Fragor ability. Not even his ultimate variation that Ichigo stops before it can fire later. Ichigo then unleashes Mugetsu and fires the final Getsuga Tensho, an attack stated to be above anything named in the verse up to that point in Bleach Unmasked 3, possibly and more than likely even superior to Mimi Hagi, which resides within Ukatake and the Soul King, even the Royal Palace is more than likely weaker than Mugetsu with this statement in all honesty, which I'll explain more later on. Mugetsu obliterates Aizen out of his monster state, but Aizen survives, and it's heavily implied that if anything, Aizen was beginning to fuse it with his Zanpakuto like Ichigo did to achieve his fifth Zanpakuto state, which once again, I'll go over this later. Aizen then, while low on power, gets sealed by Akito that Urahara put him in while he was being arrogant earlier, which is why Urahara said he was smarter than that before his Hogyoku Chrysalis. Despite losing, quote-unquote, Aizen was actually going to beat Ichigo in this battle, despite Ichigo showing something that was contending for top tier in the entire series, and Kisuke needed to step in to save him in the end. This is very impressive considering what his future plans were, and many people often question if Aizen could have taken on the Zero Division, which he was bound to run into eventually if he wasn't stopped, and I'd say that all of them by Ichibei get pretty much no diff. The Zero Division consists of Shutara, Hikifune, Kirinji, Nimaya, and Ichibei, and together their five powers exceed that of the Gote 13, and while this sounds like a huge deal, you can just argue that most of the power of the Gote 13 just resides in Yamamoto, Kenpachi, and Unahana, obviously not Mimihagi and Ukitake because nobody knew that yet, and in fact, Yamamoto scaling to the Zero Division makes this extremely disappointing, actually. Even worse when you consider the fact that all of them but Ichibei get pretty much off-screened by the Royal Guard using their base forms. This is because at one point, Namaya actually thought he was going to fight Yuha and starts theorizing how strong he actually is, citing the battle with Yamamoto 1000 years ago and the clone of him that Yamamoto defeated with Bankai. After citing these, Namaya states that he probably can't cut Yuha in one attack, despite the fact that over 1000 years ago, Yamamoto was probably much weaker, not even using all of his Bankai abilities, and the clone got absolutely fodderized by him anyway. Even if you somehow disregard that, the Royal Guard flatlined the Zero Division's four normal members and base, like I said earlier, and not even the Royal Guard who can actually all amplify themselves even further is actually able to contain Yamamoto's insane Bankai power or even use it properly, so Yuha has to steal it himself. Yet, Aizen and Mugetsu Ichigo are more than likely above this. Even if you disregard War, Yamamoto, and just say theoretically that Amaya was talking mainly about the battle 1,000 years ago, then Aizen, who was actually a teacher for the Soul Society, probably knows about this and thinks he's still above it in Chrysalis. Even just the stereo 
stereotypical take Yamamoto's power and multiply it by 5 or 10 times for Bankai is easily within Aizen's ability to reason, and he still thinks Soul Reapers cannot compete with him, only being remotely scared of them when the Hogyoku needed more time to evolve him. To further add on to the point of only remotely scared of them, by the way, is one time Kubo was actually asked if Shunsui went Bankai against Aizen, against probably base Aizen before he got incapacitated, would he have been able to actually beat him? And even when the guy is shoving the answer down his throat, he's like, yeah, you know, he probably would have beaten Aizen, right? You know, trying to get him to agree with him. Kubo's like, that's not, that's not his appeal. But I love it, you know, when I let the readers think stuff like that. So even with an interviewer kind of shoving, you know, an anti-feat down Kubo's throat for Aizen, even then Kubo doesn't really agree that any of the Soul Reapers really would have beaten Aizen even in base, including Shunsui, who was pretty powerful during the War Arc versus Lilibaro. And in fact, that will kind of go into more what I'm saying here later, because Shunsui actually does extremely well against the Royal Guard, whereas the Zero Division kind of got bodied by them in base. So that is more evidence for this uh, discussion, but the only problem for Aizen, in my opinion, is Ichibane, but even with that, it's still very within Aizen's ability to win. Now, how strong Yuha is at this point is pretty vague, and he's not at his maximum versus Ichibane. Some argue he's just as strong as his Roid clone that easily destroyed Kenpachi could even convince Yamamoto he was real, although if this is the case, then Ichibane is absolutely fodder to Aizen, although the real Yuha is still probably stronger because he could handle Yamamoto's Bankai when Roid couldn't, you could just argue that he was just going to hold it until he could actually awaken and use it later. Ichibei's main quirk is his ability to power null his opponents. However, we've also seen that his ability can be negated by things like the Almighty, because while Ichibei can change the name and power levels of things it touches on a pseudo-conceptual level almost, it doesn't seem to negate their innate or passive hacks abilities, such as Yuha despite being as powerful as an ant and not having a name, still being able to use Almighty and maintaining his foresight despite being nulled. The same could more than likely be said for the Hogyoku. There's also once again the Ryatsu Neg argument from earlier, as well as the fact that the Hogyoku would just reamp Immortal Aizen over and over again, even if Aizen were somehow weakened. As a reminder, even when strapped to a chair with all his power sealed and the inability to move, nobody could execute Aizen, not Shunsui, and more than likely not Ichibei either, let alone a fully mobile version constantly evolving. That probably outscales him and would simply avoid outsmart or negate his hacks anyway. It gets even worse when Hogyoku Aizen uses passive Kyoko Suigetsu, as well as the fact that Ichibei has no real serious scaling outside of just being able to be the main force of the Zero Division, whose only scaling is being somewhere stronger than Yamamoto, let alone Aizen who thinks his ability can't even be put on the same dimension of power as Yamamoto, let alone just being stronger. Ichibei, if you put him in character, if even if Aizen did lose, would probably just slap Aizen back down to the Serate, which will allow Aizen to evolve beyond him with a new plan anyway way, as Ichibei's only job is to defend the Soul King. Now, while I'm not saying Aizen objectively wins or loses, it's not a cut and dry slap for Ichibei like most people think. I do think it is a contentious topic, especially with the transcendent lore Aizen describes being way stronger than the Zero Divisions, and Aizen probably has in and out knowledge of the Zero Division and the Soul King, knowing most of the Soul Society's history to the point that he could even manipulate Tosin, knows the sins of its creations, and knows that Yamamoto embodies most of it, and even makes a key key to go straight to the king and even knows what the soul king actually is. It's no surprise that a teacher of soul academy would eventually want to learn these things and then become disgusted. In fact, I'd say it's very pivotal to his character and to teach him that reality is full of illusions that he describes in the novel Can't Fear Your Own World. This kind of goes into one of the biggest things that got to me when I looked further into and it was Aizen's sense of a conscious despite being as malicious as he was to a lot of people. He wasn't always as invulnerable as his demeanor would show even psychologically. I mean, you have a guy who can make the really stoic and even somewhat aloof bleach cast sweat and freak out just from a mere verbal encounter while he's strapped to a chair, yet the same guy was in his feelings deep down the entire time. Aizen is questioned by Hisagi and Can't Fear Your Own World and is asked why he killed Tosin, in which Aizen actually describes killing Tosin was a mercy, because Tosin was torn between himself, his ideas of his friends versus his justice, and his past would rip apart his soul and cause him to 
to rot away, so Aizen saved him from that fate altogether. It could even be implied that Haribel was spared by Aizen as well, severely damaging her and almost killing her to the point that the Soul Reapers wouldn't, anticipating that Orihime could probably heal her. Remember that with Tosun, who he did not want to be healed, he pretty much pulverized him into paste, not just a quick slash or two like he gave the Arankar. This mercy of Tosun is probably a form of Aizen projecting even, as Aizen himself is torn between his two desires as well. One of these being his desire to be the strongest, a perfect, unreachable being and god for all of those that have none, and also for him to be normal at the same time. This contradiction is what causes the Hogyoku to grant both his wishes, which allows him to survive the battle with the strongest and ascend beyond all, while simultaneously losing to Ichigo at the end, which makes the idea of Ichigo defeating Aizen even more hard to swallow. This later on might also be why he's strapped to a chair in Miyukin. Shunsui comes to visit Aizen after Yuha's energy shakes everything, even Yukin by the way, and it's time and space closed off from the real one, and after just removing just one seal from Aizen, he breaks out of numerous others by himself just so that he can talk to Shunsui on his own terms. While strapped to a chair later, his Kiro Hitsugi was stronger than anything the current captains around him could muster, including post-Zero Division Rukia and Byakuya. Urahara confirms Aizen now probably stronger than he even was before, even while extremely sealed and unable to move, and while in this state he can cast Kyoko Suigetsu on Yuha. Yuha, the man who could see the future in a multiverse of timelines, cannot see through Kyoko Suigetsu and gets manipulated by it, not once, but twice on two separate occasions. This further confirms that Aizen did truly fuse with his Zanpak Toe, which many people still debate about. It's debated about mainly because in Jump Force, a video game, they have Aizen not fused with it, which many people disagreed with Jump Force about for doing, by the way, and they even gave Aizen a sheath for his sword in the game that he clearly never had nor could obtain. He not only uses Kyokyo while he can't even move or show his sword, but he literally pulls his sword out of nowhere while fighting Yuha, and Yuha finds it believable. Him not being in his final transcendent stage is unlikely, because if he's not, and maybe he just has some Gate of Babylon ability where he can pull his sword out of nowhere like Gilgamesh, then that means he can still activate Bankai and multiply his power by 5 through 10 times, yet still didn't even bother versus Yuha. And for those that don't know, Azampakto has 5 stages, its base state, a release state, its final release state, its transcended state, and its final transcended state. If Aizen truly did retain his powers, he would have the pinnacle of Zanpak Toe evolutions, which would explain why his power didn't decrease after being sealed, but increased due to his ascension not disappearing and getting a Mugetsu-like amp. Even without the Hogyoku, he would still retain that Zanpak Toe fusion. Even still strapped to the chair, Shunsui declared that Aizen with just his mouth was too much of a threat to Ichigo in the novels, due to his ability to use Kido and manipulate hollows, and many people also debate whether or not this Aizen still had his Hogyoku powers, in which it's not totally possible to confirm he has the Hogyoku, he still retained the amps it gave him previously, including his complete immortality, as when he gets an arm ripped off and a hole blown in his chest, then gets completely absorbed and destroyed by Yuha, Aizen just kind of reappears later like nothing happened, limbs all intact, strapped to his chair again. And while Aizen may be choosing to purposely be stuck in the chair due to wanting to reset himself and find a way to fulfill two contradictory ambitions at the same time, as he almost challenges Mayuri to see if he really can't break out of it like he says and that's all that can really be said for Aizen at this time and anyways guys I hope you enjoyed be sure to like and subscribe if you're a Bleach fan be sure to support today's sponsor Bleach Immortal Soul by pre-registering via the links down below to receive free in-game gift packs and once again thank you to Bleach Immortal Soul for sponsoring this video seriously supporting Bleach content is a must for all Bleach fans who want this series back and other than that have a great rest of your day and till next time